Karen Probably seemed annoyed fun. but agreed to follow <laughs> None of the neighborhood kids, just my family. Mm -hmm. Tonight stories. Karen? Quinn? Takeout. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Comfort Level Podcast. I'm Maddie, and I'm here with... Dale. Sam. And Husker. Husky. Oh, shut up for a second. Who's he staring down right now? He's looking directly at my soul right now. He's he said, what he Close your mouth, bud. He's huffing and puffing. He's like, it's hot. <laughs> no one told you to be barking and running around all crazy. Shout out to my cousin, man. Shout out to Brandon. We miss you, man. Miss you. He's not here tonight. Not here. He wasn't able to make it, but he will be back for the next episode. Um, but I know what Brandon would say. You know what Brandon would say? He would say, make sure you're liking and subscribing. Yeah, no. He always says that. And then also, thank you guys so much for 70,000 70, subscribers on YouTube. Let's go. Crazy. We have some new people that might have found us from shorts and stuff. So if you like watching our long form YouTube, thank you so much. Thank you. If you're here from Facebook somehow, what are you doing? How but also, thanks here? for watching. But also, how did you get here? Who are you? Yeah. Who? We grew really fast on Facebook. I'm still scared. I don't know who's on Facebook. I, I haven't about. checked the comments on Facebook. I'm sorry. I haven't. Um, just because I know every single social media is a different Wild West. And yes. everybody knows us in a different way yeah. on different social medias. We'll start and leaving comments on Facebook. Huh? Yeah. I'm going to start leaving comments on Facebook. And then I'll never know. I'll check in like never. a year. I'm like, Steph has been leaving comments for a year. Every single video. And it's interesting because I feel like the primary audience for Facebook is Karen's. Like, like this, this next story. story. Like this first story. Like this first story. Never. I just saw the video where we talked about that. And I'm like, we've never done that. <laughs> we've never done it, but it's always been eased in. It's how programming usually works. Okay. You don't realize it's happening until it's too late. Yeah. Comfort Level Podcast hey. is the place to be. Okay. Oscar on the couch. He's there. And Maddie editing. They got Steph being a dad. Yeah. And Sam in his socks. Uh -huh. right. Brandon is my cousin. He's there. And he freaking rocks. Yeah. Yeah. Just off the top of the dome, so I'm going crazy. You like you like crumple up the piece yeah, of paper and yeah. put it in your pocket. <laughs> I, I wrote this two years ago. I've been waiting to get this. With them. Two years ago, I was not a dad. I'm, like, I'm still not a dad. I'm pathetic. <laughs> <laughs> I had to wait for you to become a dad so I could finally oh. sing this song. Wait, wait, wait. Should we talk about that? We're, <laughs> we're, we're saying Steph is a dad. dad. <laughs> Steph has a family, but Steph wait, has a wait, no, wait. Family. I already had a family. <laughs> but you gotta, you gotta. You know, now you got a family. Yeah, you, you, you got kids. You Wait, I already had a I already had a blended family. I'm not married. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we already making you a whole family. I already had a stepdad. Now I have a stepmom. Well, that's not like new, new. That's like two years new. But, but now, now you're I also have, the dad that stepped up. You're the dad who I stepped have, up. I have a girlfriend who has kids. Oh. oh! <laughs> Husker does not like blended families. No, <laughs> no, for real. Shout out to your girl. She's actually really nice. Yes. Oh, yeah, and I'm happy you're happy, man. Yeah. Yeah. I honestly thought you'd be the first one to settle down. You give you give very much like mature energy. Uh, we also we call you Gramps for a reason. It's yeah. it's a real thing, you know. <laughs> Except that He's one doing... time on the cruise where I saw more of Steph than I've ever seen. That was I wouldn't say that. That was, was not the granddad. That was Steph. That, that was, was Steph. Gramp no, that was the granddad cruise. Oh. Uh, Granddad wasn't being granddad that night, remember? Yeah, that was not being granddad. Well, shout out to Steph and his relationship. I hope it does well. I hope it prospers. I hope that you'll teach us a thing or two when we have our families. Okay, so this first one is, am I the asshole for refusing to let a Karen neighbor use my pool after she demanded that I follow her pool rules? <laughs> <What>? <laughs> It's a little bit of a sandwich salad. Wait. Wait. I think one of those Karen things Wait. To say. Did the Karen have a pool first that she let you use? Or did she demand her pool rules at your pool? <laughs> mm. 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 Am I the asshole for refusing to let a Karen neighbor use my pool after she demanded that I follow her pool rules. So I, 34 male, live in a suburban neighborhood with a decent sized backyard and a pool. 
I've always been friendly with my neighbors, including Karen, mid-40s, female, who moved in next door about a year ago. She seemed nice at first, but as time went on, she started to show her true colors. Over the summer, Karen started coming over with her kids, asking if they could use the pool. And at first, I didn't mind because I was usually outside anyway, and the kids seemed to enjoy it. But soon, things got weird. Karen began showing up unannounced, sometimes even when I wasn't home, and I caught her using the pool without my permission. One day I came home to find Karen and several of her friends <laughs> having a full-on pool party in my backyard, oh my complete with snacks, music, and pool floats. I confronted her, and she acted like it was no big deal, saying, oh, you weren't using it, so I figured it was fine. I told her politely but firmly that she needed to ask before coming over and that I wasn't comfortable with her just assuming that she could use the pool whenever. Karen seemed annoyed but agreed to follow the rules. Then last week, she took things to a whole new level. Karen knocked on my door with a typed up list of pool rules that she wanted me to follow. Her list included things like no swimming after 5 p.m. because her kids have a strict bedtime no loud music when her family is outside, and mandatory weekend access for her and her kids, but only for their exclusive use. Wait, what? I thought she was joking at first, but she was dead serious. I laughed and told her there was no way I was following any of her rules for my pool. Karen got angry and called me selfish, saying that I was ruining the neighborhood spirit and being unfair to the kids. Now she's been spreading rumors to other neighbors that I'm a bad guy for not sharing the pool. Some of the neighbors have even said that I should just let it go to avoid drama. But I feel like this is insane. It's my pool and she's acting like she owns it. Am I the asshole for refusing to let Karen and her kids use my pool after she demanded that I follow her ridiculous rules? And then there's a few updates. Where were the neighbors? <laughs> Who are the neighbors? <laughs> Just let it go. Just just do the rules, man. That's crazy. Okay, but I'm also like at the point where I'm like, I'm like, imagine she comes over or like lets her kids go over, not even going over herself to your pool. And then a kid ends up drowning. And then she's like, I'm going to take you to court because yes. my kid drowned in your pool. Like, you can't use my pool anymore. You're just showing up unannounced using my pool. Yeah. Like, if someone can slip on my dry or my sidewalk in front of my house and sue me in the winter because I didn't put ice or put a ice melt down or shovel it or anything, right. mm -hmm. I don't want anyone to send my pool that I didn't allow in there. <laughs> like, right. And just assuming so. Never being told that that was a thing. Right. Just assuming that she could be there. And then being upset when you were confused that she was there. Um, that reminds me of, like, when I was a little kid. Um, I... I think I might have been going crazy that day. I might have just not had enough water or something because I had a neighbor that lived up the street. We were best friends. And she basically, her mom sent me home early because I had to go somewhere. And she was like, okay, well, I'll be back in a little bit, like a few hours. And it must have been that summer day where it was the slowest day in the world. Drake and Josh wasn't hitting. SpongeBob <laughs> wasn't hitting. And I'm like, God, like I played basketball for 20 minutes. I came inside, had the most refreshing drink of water, like... I feel like I'm just sitting here doing nothing. These commercials are taking forever. And so I'm like, it's been a while. And so I go up to her house. I think I, I, had, I think I had done this a few times too. But the second time I had gone up there, I could have swore I saw a figure in my friend's bedroom window. And um, I was like, oh my God, she's home. Like, cool. Like, let's, but I don't know. I went to the front door. I actually don't remember going to the front door. I immediately went to the back door, I think. <laughs> and the back door was unlocked because oh it was God. suburbia. And so I came in the house. I was like, hey, so-and-so, so-and-so? Like, because I was like, I saw your face, right? And so I'm like coming through the living room. Tell me why. That's when the whole family comes home. They walk in their front door and I'm just in the living room like, uh. <laughs> <laughs> and like, I was embarrassed. Their parents were obviously pissed. And I was like, uh. And I was like, it's not what it looks like. Like, I'm just like, I thought you guys were home. And so it was super embarrassing because it was like, not like me even trying to be up to no good. And I got caught. Yeah. I'm like, it was, this was a little kid misunderstanding. And now I look like a criminal mm -hmm. and you probably don't want to hate. You probably don't what like, that's say? not a good kid for my daughter anymore. They were like, you need to go home, get out of our house. And I was like, <laughs> oh, right, right. I'm so sorry. And I was so embarrassed. And I was like, I'm, I can never see that friend anymore. 
because that's how I solve all my problems. Yeah. Even now to this day, I'm like, I guess I can't ever speak to you. And so did you talk to them again? I didn't do it, but she actually ended up the the friend, my best friend at the time, ended up coming down the street and knocked on the door because that's how it was done back then. <laughs> the proper way. Knock on the door, you let someone. Open. I didn't want to answer. Yeah. But I came out and I was like, hey, I'm so sorry. And she was like, hey, do you want to go play? And I was like, what do you mean? Your mom hates me. Yeah. And she was like, oh, well, she just said, she said it's okay and you can come back. Like, it's fine now. And then I come inside and they like have me like stay for dinner. And out there like, <laughs> <laughs> the, the mom did pull me aside though. And she was like, hey, so don't ever do that again. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I'm so sorry. I thought you guys were home. And she was like, it's fine, but don't do that again. I was like, I'm so sorry. Did you cry? I would have cried. Uh, I don't think I cried in front of them, but okay. I think I was so embarrassed. That's why I was like, that embarrassment that I went through, I was like, that's why I was like, I can never speak to them again yeah. because I don't have conflict resolution like like <laughs> no skills. skills at all. And so it's like, it's done. Yeah. I just burnt that bridge. <laughs> the entire relationship. <laughs> this is my best friend. We've been through so much together. He was like, it's no friend. That's it. We're you know? Done. I was like, I guess I got to make some new freaking friends, dude. Because <laughs> this you one. You already moved on in your head. You're <laughs> like, yes. I'm already done. <laughs> 10 year olds and she was already dead to yes. you. Yes. <laughs> and it wasn't even me because I was like, she's gone forever and i can't even explain why because i honestly didn't think they wanted to hear me out but i actually do feel that <laughs> that's <laughs> so the reason why i said that was uh being on the other side of a person being in a place that they're not supposed to be yeah i can understand how frustrating it is where you're like what are you doing in my personal space right. you you neighbor but you don't live here you know and that's all i have to say because i talk too much go ahead but you wouldn't have the audacity to like Think Never entitled to be like, I can come in here whenever I feel like it. Never. But seeing her face, seeing the mom's face, yeah. I was like, <laughs> and I didn't even mean to do it, you know, but her face was very much like, this kid is going to kill us in our sleep. Like this kid is in our house. <laughs> like, I don't know how she got <laughs> You're probably, you have a big old cellular. <laughs> I, yeah, I don't, it was definitely one of those moments where I look back and I was like, I, I only speak about it now because it was like 15 plus years ago. If it was like five years ago, I'd be like, I can't speak year. about this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was Sabia yeah, too. Sabia <laughs> like, no, we're cool. We're cool. <laughs> okay. So update, update on the first story. Yeah. Just to let everyone know, my backyard fence doesn't have a lock. I've taken your advice and I purchased one for the store. I'll Good. be installing it tomorrow. For those suggesting I get a camera, I already have one, but it's not pointing directly at the pool, more towards the fence entrance. And then there's another update too. I guess I'll just read that. Hey everyone, an update on the situation. Thank you for all the advice. It has really helped me to see that I wasn't overreacting. No. So I went ahead and installed a keypad lock on my backyard fence. I figured it would solve the problem without needing another awkward conversation with Karen. Plus you were all right about the liability stuff. I really don't want to deal with any potential fallout if somebody gets hurt using my pool. Of course, Karen noticed the lock pretty much immediately. She was at my door. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Furious saying I was locking out the neighborhood kids and treating her family like criminals. She went on about how I was being dramatic and why couldn't I just let them use it like before? I told her straight up that I wanted some privacy and control over who was using my pool. After all, it's my backyard, not a community park. She rolled her eyes and said I was being selfish. Honestly, I feel a lot better with the lock on now. It's a bit awkward with Karen, but I'd rather that than have her acting like my backyard is a public pool. Thanks again for the support. Like, imagine you just went to her backyard. Yeah, it let's just set up like that. a little picnic, like blanket, <laughs> yeah. a little picnic basket, eat peanut butter and jelly sandwiches just in her backyard. I bet she would be like, "What are you doing? What are you doing here?" Like, oh, it's just just wanted to use the. I just wanted to enjoy the neighborhood. <laughs> she, you honestly, that's a good idea. If the before he did the keypad thing, he should have did the yeah. backyard. Be like, do you like it when I'm in your space all the time, Karen? I, I threw a I have a like, wedding. But then she would have like called the cops on her or something. Be like, oh, she would have <laughs> there's someone outside of my yard. They're like threatening me. <laughs> like that's what she would have done. I'd be like, is there any any of my friends having a wedding tiny time soon? I have a great reception place. <laughs> Wait, does she actually care about the neighborhood? Because wasn't there rules that her family gets exclusive? Not the neighborhood. Exclusive. Yeah. Like, she was like, we get exclusive access. You care about yourself. You on care. weekends. But you, yeah, on weekends. <laughs> None of the neighborhood kids, just my family. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. That the rules are what send me over. Listen, 
I don't even own my house. I rent space for my roommates and they have friends over. And like, was it last weekend? I don't know. But I showed up. We came, I came back with my girlfriend to the house and I was like, what are all these cars doing here? <laughs> <laughs> it was all, it was last Friday and I wasn't even like mad, mad, but I was like, ah, I got to walk inside and socialize with people yeah, or something. Yeah. And as I've already told you guys, I'm like, my girlfriend's like so antisocial. I'm surprised she even came to Maddie's birthday party. So I was <laughs> like, uh, like we came back to the house and then I went inside first to look and I was like, oh, everyone's out back. So I was like, hurry, sneak hurry, to the room. Hurry, sneak hurry, to the room. room. I'll, I'll, I'll go say hi so they know I'm here. <laughs> and then the, you sneak back. They don't even know yeah. that you're here. You want them to say hi to anybody. And I think later on, I talked to my roommates and they were like, oh, we didn't even know she was here. I was like, cool. You didn't need to know immediately. Which she's over all the time, so they don't care. But it was just like, she's like, I do not want to talk to anybody right now. And I was like, that is completely fine. It was fine. Yeah, that's okay. Like my roommates. Hey, they own the house. <laughs> I don't care. I don't. And at least that's a reason like your roommates through the party versus your strange Karen neighbor through a party. Right. Yeah, I want to. Let's see what, but even still, it's it's still color. sometimes annoying when you come home and you're like, oh, I wasn't expecting people. There's all these people home. <laughs> like, Those red ones are going crazy. Those are the most beautiful grapes I've ever seen. Those are plump and full. The way you like changed your mind about the grapes once you saw the the presentation. The presentation is immaculate. Because it's also the mix of colors. It's the Tupperware looks good. Mm. Come on. Come on. I know that's Mama G. That's actually me. That ain't Maddie. <laughs> okay. Well, I will say though, <laughs> she doesn't even know they're in the house. Every time we'll go <laughs> like on a trip somewhere, and Maddie like brusts out the the bag of grapes. I'm like, oh, Wait, did you have it, grapes in Oklahoma? It's great. We've actually had. I I've actually brought grapes twice. <laughs> On the drive. I'm sad to say it's actually a consistent thing. Oh, it's a yeah. drive thing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I bring You're... fruit because mm -hmm. when I bring like snacks from like the gas station, like candy and stuff, it makes me feel sick. Mm -hmm. And I assume it's the same way for everyone else. But if you have fruit, it's still sweet. Um, but it doesn't make you feel sick. And you're in the car for like eight hours. So it's like kind of easier. Well, you live to in eat. a different world. Me and SJ, it's gas station city, <laughs> man. We're eating disgusting things. No, I mean, sometimes it's gas station city. I would love a grape. It seems like you just make it for your car and that's it. Remember when Brandon this time made sandwiches for everybody? That was pretty awesome. That, the way that sandwich tasted so good, I've never tasted a sandwich like that. And it was such a basic sandwich and I was like, this was the most delicious thing I've ever eaten. It's better than takeout, hmm. like this next door. Ah, she's eating the grape while I'm doing this shit crazy. Okay, so this next story is, am I the asshole for completely cutting my wife off from our finances because she wouldn't stop ordering takeout? Mm. I feel like sometimes, because I'm a big finance person, uh -huh. sometimes you got to protect people from themselves, and that might, completely cutting off might be a big deal, but maybe an allowance or something where I'm like, you get this thing for that. Mm -hmm. it's hard because it's like it almost feels like you're in a way kidnapping their freedom even if you are right, giving them yeah. allowance but at the same time it's like i can't also be with someone who just spends yeah. all of my money so it's like i need I, to know how egregious it is right yeah because that matters because it's like yeah you could be the asshole or no you're yeah. absolutely not if you're completely leveraging our financial future for some raising canes <laughs> well like okay, raising no. canes of all places you would go to that place, but it's gonna Extra be like sauce. the DoorDash, <laughs> the DoorDash raising canes. Oh, it's not and, like she would oh, yeah. raising canes too. It's not it's even like ten times herself. more. Yeah. Ten dollars yeah. more. Yeah, it's forty five dollars for a five piece. And she ordered the, yeah. the the special like the the delivery, so it's faster. Yeah, <laughs> then you're crazy. They actually think I would divorce you if you're doing express. You yeah. don't need the food that fast. <laughs> Let your stomach get ready no. for it. If you're really hungry, go get it. But you, if you hit Express, I'm div that's grounds for divorce. Express is crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> Am I the asshole for completely cutting my wife off from our finances because she wouldn't stop ordering takeout? I am 41 years old and male. My wife is 39 years old. 
My wife doesn't work due to a minor disability. It's not as if she can't work, but she complains of discomfort and exhaustion all the time. The discussion over her working basically ended five years ago, and I've completely given up on the prospect of her ever having a job again. Seeing as she doesn't even come close to qualifying for disability and brings in no income, we currently live entirely off my salary. I do not mind financially supporting her, but my wife's spending habits have become gradually more and more reckless. It began with her ordering takeout twice a week, and then that escalated into three times a week, and now she's ordering takeout nearly every day. This is despite our fridge being stocked constantly. I do the shopping. I even make sure to have a freezer full of things that she would only have to microwave. Last month was a pretty heavy one for her. She spent over $1,100 on delivery apps alone. We cannot afford this. There were several days that she ordered twice. I may have reacted harshly, but on Friday, I pulled money out of our savings and completely paid off the card and then canceled it. I then removed all the money from our joint account and I funneled it into my own account. Apparently, my wife learned about this when she tried to order takeout. She tried to call the company who explained the card had been canceled. She texted me asking what happened. I responded that she was cut off. Well, when I walked in that evening, my wife was lying on the floor, dramatically saying that she had low blood sugar. I told her that she could eat any of the food that we have in our fridge or freezer. I also noticed that she took the garbage out, probably for the first time in a decade. I'm surprised that she even knew where the outdoor bin was. I can only assume she was disposing of the evidence of what she ate, as she was pretending to have not eaten, but I honestly don't care enough to dig through the garbage to find it. She was furious at me all weekend, was what I did over the top. And then there's an update, and we'll read the comments. I say yes and no. Okay. Because I don't know if I missed it, but I don't like the jump to just canceling, funneling everything into your single account. She's a grown woman. You can have a conversation with her and say, mm -hmm. this is not good for our finances. We do not have it. We don't have $1,100 a month worth of money to be spending on food deliveries when we have a lot of food in the house, mm -hmm. which groceries are expensive. So we pay money for that too. I think you should be, especially if you're married, you should be able to have a conversation with your wife and say, this is not something we can do. Mm -hmm. And then have, her, and she'll conversate with you back, tell you what she can do, and like you can work it out that way. I think it's very childish to be like, I saw it, I'm cutting off. That's like what you would do to a, a kid. That's what you would do to your child. Mm -hmm. So that's the part I don't like is just the jump to automatically take the money. And it's already it's already weird if you're the sole, sole person bringing in money. There's already kind of like a, a dynamic there where people can feel like, less than because they're not bringing money in and you're just completely reinforcing that in a marriage i'm like your my money is your money that's how i would see it so i don't have the right to just take our money from you mm -hmm. and that's what i didn't like about it but i also don't think you should be <laughs> spending, spending that much money on food and this is a person who's been deep in food del delivery things and i'm like i would never i'm not gonna like use large portions of my income just to get food delivery. Mm -hmm. So I don't like how he did it, but I, the end result, it could have ended up the same. She could have been like, I don't care. I'm going to do it anyway. And then maybe you go to that step, but I don't like just doing it. I think they need to go get some counseling. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because I feel like I'm, like, I'm, I'm tracking with you, but I'm like, even her response to how it happened was like, my blood sugar's low. It's like, that's the first thing you've done. I'm like, obviously, this person's already given up on her even getting a job mm -hmm. for like five years previously, which oh, I'm like, yeah, I did forget about that. So that's, I'm like, obviously, the way she responds to anything he probably brings up to her is probably just like not an adult. Like, I'm like, you need to go get counseling and figure some stuff out. <laughs> and I do agree where it was like, why would you just take everything out? But I'm like, I also kind of get it in the sense where it's like, I don't, if I have a conversation where I know how it's going to end, but I'm like, at that point, I feel like the con the conversation doesn't need to be like, let's talk about finances. It needs to be like, let's talk about like getting some help. Talk together. about mental health. Man. Yeah. It does like, sound like depression too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's funny that you guys clocked that so early because in the comments and then I think eventually in the second post, they kind of discussed that more where it's like, 
potentially is it some type of like food addiction or some mental illness around the food but um when i first read the story i know that i would hate for that to happen to me but i also understand like what you said um before the story happened you didn't know but you were saying if somebody was spending all my money i would be upset about that And I understand that it's both of our money, but Mm -hmm. it's like, okay, if I'm in charge of our finances for us and Uh I can see that we are not able to afford this, if you're not going to spend, I'm going to have to cut it out because as of right now, this is one of the ways that I can control it and be like, okay, maybe maybe we'll be good this month. Right. So it's like, it's definitely not a permanent solution. No. And it's, I think you could definitely argue that it's not the most mature thing to do potentially. Um, but I think that's probably what direction I would have gone into too, just to grab some control back because it's like my partner is not willing to bend with me. I've been, you know, trying to meet her at a certain point because he said that it has escalated a lot. It was twice a week, then it was three times a week. Now it's every day, but now it's sometimes multiple times a day. So it's been happening for a long time. Would you at least bring it up to them or would you just do it the same way that the OP did it where it's just like, I just moved it all. So they didn't have access to it. And then they figured out when they tried to. Order. I don't think I would warn them that I was going to take the money out of the account because I think they would move it. And no, but I mean, after you did it, would you let them know, like, by the way, this is what I did because you're spending so much. Or would you just do it? And then whenever they figure out, they figure out. I think I would have conversations with them beforehand, yeah. which I assume OP's doing. They didn't mention it, I don't think. But I would assume that OP has been like, hey, we can't spend like this. We don't have the money I'm in the budget. It, yeah. I'm hoping. Yeah, I'm hoping. So. Uh, but I don't know if I it would it would be brought up eventually. Mm-hmm. But the thing is, it's like, did he even really have time to like register she or was she immediately that, ordering? Yeah. You know, like, I That's don't know true. if it was every he day. Just transferred out. She's like, DoorDash. I mean, she, she had time to call the card company. The company yeah. was like, the, that card's like shut off. Like, yeah. you can't even use that. So that's all like, I, would you? I don't know. I mean, I guess maybe he did it at work and then like came home and she had already like, <laughs> like yeah, I don't know. I think um, because definitely I think it's, it is an action where you're kind of taking away control from your partner. Mm-hmm. Um, but I also think what she is doing is kind of taking away, in my opinion, some type of control in him because you're kind of bending his hand to mm-hmm. be like, OK, well, every single month I have to pay for this mm-hmm. no matter what. And you're not considering what I have to say of, you know, so I think it's a temporary solution of like, Hey, let's stop for now. Let's have a conversation because you won't stop unless the money's not there. So now let's talk, you know, um, you're, you're hurting both of us. You're literally hurting both of us. Like that money that you're putting in food delivery could be used for our future. It could be used in savings. It could be used to other things that we want to do in life. And it's basically being thrown away in food delivery mm-hmm. he had to pull from his savings just to pay that yes. card off yeah so it's like we don't even have that money in the budget We're for this month from our future That's yes wild. i would even argue though um there's certain times there's certain ways it's almost not taking control especially with like like you know we don't know what's all going on with her but the fact that it was kind of like oh i don't even just want to get a job not that i can't but it's kind of just like i just don't want to it's yeah. like you're also giving your control away in that sense too mm-hmm. where it's like you could be doing something to make money but you're not because I want to say something and I want to be careful because I don't want to make it seem like I'm not sympathetic towards people who have, you know, maybe disabilities that people can't see that hinder them from getting a job. But I think there are potentially some people who take advantage of that and they might be like, well, it, you know, I, I don't know. I feel like there's other people in situations where they can't not have a job. So they like, they do work. So I don't know. Maybe she just like, was really bored and like food became something for her mm-hmm. like a way to be happy because like she's not working you know i don't know i also wonder if she just helps around the house instead because i mean that's different mm-hmm. if it's just like you're sitting at home you're ordering takeout you're watching tv that's probably bad but if it's like at least you're helping around keeping the house clean and stuff then it's like okay you're actually contributing to something yeah, yeah, yeah. you know and he didn't mention that that wasn't happening so right. i would assume that they probably don't have to worry about that it's probably yeah. only food that's the biggest issue Okay, so top comment, not the asshole, over $1,100 on takeout. That's half a month of wages for me. No, this needs to stop, and the manipulation with the blood sugar thing is beyond overdramatic, and the fact that she took them to the garbage after years of not doing anything proves she knows what she's doing. And then somebody else said, I wonder if he will be saving money long-term if he divorces her. 
Okay, so update. Nine days ago, I made a post about how my unemployed wife has spent over $1,100 on delivery apps in just a month. This is egregiously outside of what we can afford to spend on takeout. And since she doesn't seem willing to stop, I canceled our credit card and moved the money from our joint account into my own. For the following few days, my wife kept talking about how I was financially abusing her. She threw several tantrums despite apparently being severely malnourished, threatened divorce, threw a bunch of food we had in the fridge away to try and strong arm oh. me into letting her get takeout. And even tried to guess my bank account a bunch of times. Sorry, my password isn't Taco Bell 123. Okay, come on. <laughs> the last one was how I learned if you try to guess someone's bank account password enough times, the bank will send them an automated email. But last Friday, the complaints and the threats stopped and she seemed mostly back to normal. I figured she had given up. That was until today, which was garbage day, when I took the last bag out before taking the bins to the curb. I discovered half a dozen fast food bags and other takeout containers in it. My wife wasn't supposed to have access to money. I had no idea how she was affording the food. I confronted her about it, and at first she denied everything. I had to bring all of her fast food garbage in to get her to fess up. She had taken out a loan. Now, I thought that she had borrowed money from a friend or family member, but she had taken out one of those predatory oh, payday loans. What? Before you ask, no, Wait, I had no idea how she was approved. Yeah, how was she <laughs> Within the next hour, I froze my credit. I then drove her to the payday loan place where I paid the loan off in cash. I will now have to dip further into my savings to pay the rent. I suppose in a certain way, cutting her off was successful. She didn't order takeout anymore. She just drove to the restaurants to pick up her food. And for the low, low price of $20 for every $100 she borrowed or $60 total in fees. In addition, I told her that we would be getting divorced. So yeah, my marriage is over. Oh. I don't even know what alimony laws in my states are like, but I assume she'll happily live in a cardboard box under a bridge if Uber Eats will bring her food there. My God. Oh, my mouth is dry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's definitely, it has <clears throat> to be a mental health thing. Mm -hmm. For sure. That's an addiction. Yeah. So that's something. So there was a comment and they removed it, sadly, but it had a good amount of upvotes. But somebody responded to that comment and they said, I think you might be right here. This lady has some sort of severe eating disorder and those are difficult to treat. At least he can stop enabling her this way. And somebody else said, I agree. No mentally healthy person is spending so far outside their budget and is willing to take out predatory loans just to keep eating out. While it could have been good for OP to encourage her to go to therapy before jumping to divorce, she would also need to see the issue and want to make yeah. a change for that to work. If she's willing to jump through this level of desperation over anything else, even just buying frozen fast food from the grocery store, then she needs way more help than he can give. Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. And that's, it's crazy, like... You It'd be different if it like you didn't have any food, but I'm like the fact that you got a fridge and freezer full of food is like oh, that's got that's got to be bad. Mm -hmm. She was throwing it away. Mm -hmm. That's to bad. Like force him. What was that much better than the food you had in your own fridge? Is what I want to. Well, know. I mean, I will say like it's, fast food is greasy food. It's yeah. like hot and ready food that they make for you. It's easy. It's it's good. It's true, but I mean. People well, that know how to cook, if you put that effort in it, it's like good, but it's just easier ooh, to go get Maybe food. she don't know how to cook. You're right. Ooh. Well, that's the thing because I'm like, when I was eating a lot, like four or five times a week, mm -hmm. it was literally that. I was like, I don't want to get in the kitchen and do it. But that's different though because it's like, you don't, you have a job, you, you, go, you go to work. So sometimes you come home, you're like, I don't want to cook. Where I'm like, not saying she doesn't do anything because, like I said, we don't know what she does at home, but I'm like, I think it's a little different. I feel like it's the same, the same things of it. Because I feel like mine was like when you get very depressed and like mm, just, yeah, yeah, I yeah. don't feel like that any that type of I don't, don't want to cook. Do, okay, yeah, that's I a different type of I don't want to cook. <laughs> and I'm not saying it's an excuse. I'm like, for me, even in in my deepest depression, I'm thinking about money. Like money is still <laughs> important to me. I'm like, I don't ever want to be broke. I don't ever want to be living paycheck to paycheck. So I still do things that I like. I'm helping myself. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people don't have those skills, and they're like. Depression is going to take you fully the whole entire way. And it doesn't matter. You won't do things to keep yourself out of different dangerous situations. Mm -hmm. I could have been like that where I'm like, 
I don't want to do anything. I'm spending all my money on this one thing. Yeah. But I I kind of agree with OP. I, I don't like going for divorce, but if she's doing a payday loan, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. this place is evil, too, because they're like, hey, what do you need this loan for? She's like, I just want to go get some canes. And they're like, Try it on the dock. <laughs> you don't have a job? Take this money. They, they're probably, just like com- conversing. Yes, they're like, girl, they're I get evil. it. It's lunchtime. <laughs> She probably if somehow she, found out a way to put her husband's <laughs> name on it. Girl, it's lunch. Time. I get it. Girl. It's like the most <laughs> personal pay, payday loan yeah. person ever. She's like, what you gonna do with this? She's like, girl, go get you some lunch. <laughs> I'm about to leave in 15 too. She's like, my husband won't pay for anything. I'm like, go get your loan. We're gonna get you some money. Get you some lunch. You take me with you. <laughs> <laughs> you buy the payday <laughs> Okay, so... Am I the asshole for my reaction to finding out my wife's pregnant with twins? Wait, say that again. I'll say it again and I'll just read it. Yeah. Am I the asshole for my reaction to finding out my wife's pregnant with twins? 37 male, my wife Julie, 35 female, and I have two sons together, five male and three male. We're solid financially, but we both have intense jobs. I work 60-ish hours a week. I already felt spread too thin with our sons and jobs. And I also want to make sure that I can pay for my boys to go to private school and college. I didn't have much financial support growing up and I don't want my kids to worry about money like I did. It all felt more doable with two kids, but Julie has always wanted three kids. She actually told me that when we first met in college, before we were even dating. She's an only child, so I think she likes the idea of a big family and her kids having siblings to play with. About a year ago, Julie raised the idea of trying for a third. With everything going on, I tried to convince her that two was the right number for our family, but it still meant a lot for Julie to have three. I did tell her that I'd have three kids before we got married, and so I was ultimately willing to try for another after a lot of conversations. Julie, to her credit, left her job at a firm to do government work, which reduced her salary but gives her more time to be there for the kids. Julie is now three months pregnant. We had an appointment yesterday and found out we were having twins. Both of us were shocked. I honestly wanted to scream, but she seemed thrilled. And when we got into the car, Julie said I looked like I was going to cry. I expressed that I am terrified and I genuinely do not know how I'm going to manage four kids. Three kids was already a stretch and doubling our amount of children is very overwhelming. (laughs) I told her that I feel like I should leave my job and find something less time consuming, but I'd feel like a failure because I don't know if I'll be able to provide the life I've always envisioned giving to my kids, i.e. private school and college paid for. I basically am in a position where I feel like I need to choose between making sure my kids are financially solid or having a close relationship with each of them. Julie said that we would figure it out, and I told her that I just needed some time to think. She even kept trying to talk through it with me right then, even though I told her to give me a minute. Julie then asked if I was a little bit excited, and I snapped and I said no. Julie got teary and said that I was being a dick and asked how I couldn't be excited about our children. She said she's overwhelmed too, and that I hadn't even asked her how she felt. I pointed out that she was the one who wanted to grow our family and had zero reservations about three, and so I didn't realize she was overwhelmed about the twins. Julie started crying and said that I was being a jerk. She's been upset ever since and is staying away from me. I do think I was harsh in the moment, and I've tried to apologize and express that I want to support her in this, but I think it was fair for me to be stressed in the moment under the circumstances, and I wish that she could also see where I was coming from. Am I the asshole? Uh, I would say no one's the a-hole. Yeah. Because it's a lot for everyone to go through at that point in time. Mm-hmm. And not that anyone specifically was trying to make someone, like, upset. Right. But it's like, obviously, both of them are under a fairly deep amount of stress. Like, oh, my goodness, I have to... Like, we were expecting one, and now we're getting two. Yeah. And that's a lot different. And it's like... Yes, maybe she did nag at him a little bit, but at the same time, it's like, okay, she's also like going through something and she's also pregnant. So, yeah, it, it, she just wants to, like, are you happy? <laughs> like, she's just yeah. trying to get to him, like, are you happy? But at the same time, like, obviously, he's going through something. He's kind of trying to process so many different things at once that he just kind of snaps. So, it's like, I don't think anyone's really the a hole. It's like you're both going through something so stressful and things happened and they weren't intended to happen the way they did. Mm hmm. 
but it's no more of like okay hopefully you can move on from this more than like ooh, you're yeah being an a-hole yeah i agree i don't think i don't think she's the asshole i don't think he's the asshole i think he really articulated his feelings really well to you know help me understand like the fact of like his confl- him being conflicted because mm-hmm. he knows that he's gonna have to sacrifice one thing mm-hmm. and i think that's a tough decision on whether you want to support your kids so that they have a good life or you want to have your kids probably you know maybe not live as lavish of a life but mm-hmm. they know you very well and I think um, that's a tough decision because I know which one he probably wants. And I think the ones that the kids would be benefited from the most, which would probably be a relationship with him. Yeah. But I also know, you know, he's basically being like, I, but I, I want to give them a better life and I can't do that if, you know. Yeah. It's like his dream is gone. His dream is gone. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, it's not anybody's fault because he was like, I agreed to this before. Yeah. I knew she wanted three. Mm-hmm. We tried for three. It just happened, mm-hmm. you know. Um. I also feel bad for the wife because I know she's, you know, like you said, she's literally pregnant and hearing her husband be like, no, I'm not, I'm not excited, excited about this. Yeah. Like, that's got to be really hurtful. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't think there's any assholes here. I think it is going to be really tough whatever way they navigate it. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Because I was thinking like maybe a little bit, but hearing what you guys are saying, I think I do agree with your, what you're saying. This kind of reminds me of, I always remember being a kid and watching shows like, uh, like Boy Meets World, mm-hmm. and there would be a situation where a character would snap at another one, like Corey would snap at Topanga. And kind like, of a lot, anyway. Well, I'm like, I had a, such a crush on Topanga, and I'm yeah. like, in my head, I'm like, I would never treat her like that. I would <laughs> never, like, <laughs> you're so dumb. Like, I'd be a kid, like, you're dumb for reacting like that. Uh-huh. But then when you grow up, you're like, you can't control your emotions in every type of way. It shouldn't be your baseline to be angry and snap all the time. But there's just instances where you do snap, and this is a very stressful situation. You didn't react in the best way. You didn't react probably in the way that you would do if you had more time to deal with it. Mm-hmm. It's just this is what happens in marriages. You're going to have difficult conversations. You're going to be difficult times. Mm-hmm. I think this is one of them. Yeah, neither one of you are wrong because it is a stressful situation. But everything's not like a TV show where I'm like, it's so easy to just – just don't snap. Mm-hmm. And I don't think it is always that easy sometimes. I do think it's good to have good emotional control over yourself, but that doesn't mean you have to be perfect in every situation because that's just not yeah. possible as a person. And it's not like he like didn't see the issue. He was like, I yeah. I was a little too much. Yeah, I shouldn't have done you know? that. And he was like, but also I think it was a heavy situation. Like he was aware of his emotions. He was aware of where he could have done better. He understood where she was coming from. And I think it was just, you know, a situation, yeah, where he cracked a little bit. You know, he just like, he couldn't control it yeah. for a second. And it is what it is. She w- she just, didn't realize what she was doing. Yeah. He wasn't ready to answer. She didn't realize that. Yeah. You know. And maybe, and I don't know, I'm sure you're telling her this, but. I would just encourage in your apologies articulating these feelings yeah. and doing it in a way that's not an excuse but like, no, I own up to what I did, but this is where my head was. And I'm like, I love you. I don't want you to feel like I'm not excited for our children. Right. I'm sure he still is. Even if he's like scared of the financial and all this stuff, it's just two more people that are a part of him and his wife. And I'm sure he's going to love them. Mm-hmm. Even if there is this other deep, this this boot hanging off in the distance, like, oh, how am I going to take care of it? Yeah. I'm sure he's, he's happy that they exist. Because that's scary. It is scary. Like, even being, you know, in a, like, somebody who's working on taking care of myself and being able to support myself, I would freak out if I was, like, you know, and he's not the sole provider of, yeah. like, another person. Yeah. Like, that is so much pressure in and of itself, and those two are doing it together, but even then, you're like, okay, well, we have... You know, two now for the people to worry about. Four on two, it's they're outnumbered, and they're expensive right now. Those, the I think I guess we're switching to uh, to uh, cloth diapers because this is crazy. You know, something something's got to give. Because I felt like when I was a kid, the number they would always say like the cost it takes to raise a kid from zero to eighteen is like a quarter of a million dollars. Really, the the number I heard was a million. Oh, that's all. I know it had to increase, but I remember that was always the number that they said like it costs a quarter of a million dollars to raise a kid. That's definitely more. It probably is a million dollars now, and I'm like, mm-hmm. that's wild. Yeah, that's like a crazy thing. You're like, dang, that's like four million dollars on four kids. Mm-hmm. Yep. So, 
I don't know. I don't think there's any assholes here. A lot of growing. Yeah, just talk. Mm-hmm. And I hope that she can eventually like get to the point where she can talk to and say, yeah, it probably did hurt, and, but we can talk about this because we're in this. We have to be in this together. Yeah. You we have to in. be in this. So top comment. I cried in the car when I left my OB's office after learning we were expecting twins. My husband was also visibly upset. It's normal to be overwhelmed by that news. Just about everyone who wasn't planning on twins and my mom, moms of multiple groups said the same. They cried too. For me and my husband, it was a roller coaster of emotion as we came to terms with it. We had nine-ish months to prepare and we did get excited by the time they got here. Truth be told, it was hard for the first few months, but listen, you can make it. You will make it work and you will fall in love with them again and laugh at the trepidation you're having right now, I promise. And somebody else said, twin mom here. My husband and I could not stop laughing when we found out and we were on cloud nine all day. The panic didn't start until bedtime. Our boys are seven months old now and we're so grateful for them. It's such a special journey. A little odd to be finding out at three months along though, right? We found out right away at our first eight week scan. I mean, it's, it's funny because like even talking about that one, mm-hmm. it's almost interesting because you even think about like just unplanned pregnancies in general. Yeah. Not even just like, oh, like, oh, we figured out there was twins. But just unplanned pregnancies or people are like, I'm not excited. But then they, the baby arrives and depending on who's having the baby, some people are like, oh, my God, I love this baby. But it's like at the beginning, you're like, ah, yeah. <laughs> like yeah. everybody normally has that initial shock where it's like this was completely unplanned. Like, well, I mean, yeah, sometimes people plan for it. But I will say, like, when you have the baby. I feel like almost every parent is like, look, this is a lot, right? This is a lot. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like um, <laughs> the last place that I worked at his, um, the owner and his wife, they ended up having twins, but they were really well off. And I remember talking about, cause I, when I first started there, she had had the baby. So I didn't see her for like a, you know, a few weeks. And then um, I remember she came back, she was talking to people about it. And there was a few times I had to film stuff with her. So she would be talking to other people about it. And she ended up having a doula, which I think in a perfect world, that would be great. Cause it's literally somebody who can stay with you like a nurse, mm-hmm. I think. Let me look it up, yeah, look up before doula. we start spreading misinformation. Like, I don't know what doula is. Cause so. it was, I thought doula was only for the pregnancy. No, they stayed with they her. Stayed so a doula is a person trained to advise, inform, and offer emotional and physical comfort to a pregnant person before, during, and after the birth of their child. Mm. So I think this was his second wife's like first kid too. Mm-hmm. So it wasn't his, but it was hers. So the doula would like take the night shift, like teach her about how to take care of her baby, like all this other stuff, which would be super helpful. And I would love to say, I would love that, but I don't, I don't know if I'll be able to afford that, yeah. but well, for you other know. people, I guess like their moms are their doulas. They end up being yes, yeah. to a certain extent. Yeah. Like, and even how then, good your mom grandma's is. in the life of the baby. Yeah, it depends on how good your mom is. Yeah, yeah, you know that guest bedroom's being redecorated, like this last story. Mm. Back at it. She oh loves my god. Herself. Am I the asshole for kicking my brother and his new wife out of my house after they tried to redecorate my dead daughter's room while I was at work? So this is still pretty fresh and I'm absolutely fuming. For context, I, 38 female, lost my daughter two years ago in a car accident. She was only 14 and ever since that day, I've kept her room exactly as she left it. I don't go in there often, but just knowing that it's there untouched brings me comfort. It's like having a piece of her still with me. Her posters, her art supplies, her clothes, all of it is still there. I can't bring myself to change it. Now, fast forward a few months ago, my brother, 34 male, and his new wife, 29 female, had some financial issues after blowing a ton of money on a ridiculous, extravagant wedding. They asked if they could stay with me while they saved up for a place. Even though I wasn't thrilled about it, I agreed because, well, family, right? Mm. At first, things were fine until recently. I noticed my sister-in-law making comments about how I shouldn't keep a shrine and how it's time to move on. I ignored her because frankly, it's none of her damn business how I grieve my child. 
My brother mostly stayed quiet, but I could tell she was getting in his ear. Anyway, I came home from work last week to a literal nightmare. I walked into my daughter's room and I kid you not, they had taken all of her posters down, boxed up her stuff and had started repainting the walls a hideous beige. They had moved in a bunch of generic furniture, hung up new curtains and were apparently turning it into a guest room. I lost it, screaming, crying the whole thing. I asked them what the hell they were thinking and their response? My sister-in-law had the nerve to tell me they did it as a favor to help me move on because it was unhealthy for me to keep the room as it was. I was shaking with rage. I told them to pack their stuff up and get the hell out of my house immediately. My brother tried to calm me down, saying that they meant well and they were only trying to help me let go. He even tried to make me feel guilty by saying they had nowhere else to go right now, as if that would make me suddenly forgive them for destroying the last piece of my daughter I had left. I told them I didn't care and that they had crossed an unforgivable line. Now my whole family is divided. My parents think I overreacted and say I'm being heartless for kicking them out. They keep saying they were just trying to help, they didn't mean any harm, and that I'm being too harsh because people grieve differently. They're even suggesting I apologize and let them move back in. My brother is still texting me, asking me to reconsider, saying they're in a tough spot. But all I see when I look at him is betrayal. So am I the asshole for kicking them out and refusing to even consider letting them back in after what they did? No. I don't think so either. Mm -mm. I think um, you grieve however you want to grieve. It is literally your house. If it takes you, if it if it takes you to the point where you never ever change that spot, that is something that I need to be okay with because it doesn't it doesn't affect me. It's not my business. Right. I think the least that I can do is respect it. There was something that was close, but not even comparable, where one of my really close family members and friends had lost like uh their their dog for like that was like 15 plus years old and there was a spot that their dog used to sleep on on her new couch it was right in the middle and I remember she kind of had like all of this dog's favorite stuff and blanket everything toys and I remember there was one day I came over a little bit after it happened and um, I didn't know about it. And so I kind of tried to sit next to it. And she was like, hey, by the way, don't sit there. Like, don't move anything. Yeah. And I was like, oh, OK. And then as time moved on, I was like. And he tossed it. I like, tossed it over it. No. Huh. But as time moved on, I was like, if that is the way that you grieve, that's perfectly fine. Yeah. That literally I can sit somewhere else like. Right. I don't know. I just think the way that people deal with death is like, like they even said, it's so different per person. Yeah. But for you to be coming into somebody else's house and telling them how they should grieve and touch their stuff, like I, I am like heartbroken for her. Yeah. Because that's the way that she said that she connected to her daughter in that way. And it had only been two years it's yeah. your daughter like i don't the know daughter was 14 yeah i don't know and it would almost even be different if it was like not to say this is right but it'd be different it was like oh we just took her stuff down no, she not, not to say it would be right but it's like you were like repainting the whole room like moving new stuff like you did everything yeah they were in the middle of turning like, it, like yeah like y'all went overboard on everything you were doing yeah for me i'm still pissed even taking the death out of it even if i it was my brother and sister-in-law coming to my house and I just had a room that I didn't mm -hmm. do anything with. Right. Mm -hmm. And they came in to start doing stuff without asking me in my house. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And now you're doubly doing it on something that has actually emotional, I have emotional connection to. Yeah. And you're doing it without asking me. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you when I'm ready. Yep. Until then, you're staying in my house. <laughs> I'm doing something nice for you. You don't even go in this room. Yes. Why did you do that? Oh, we just wanted to help. Because <sighs> I think it's only happened a couple times where I've actually stayed in someone's house like for a longer period of time. Like before I got in my house, I stayed at my friend's house for like three weeks while I was closing. Mm -hmm. And the way I made myself small, I'm not, I'm not making an impact on your house in any way. I want to be like, 
He was respectful. He didn't like mess with my things. I didn't mess with your routines. Mm -hmm. I'm in your place. You gave me the honor of like letting me be here. Especially I'm not paying anything. Like this was nice of you to do. I'm not going to like say, hey, you should do this or you should do. That's crazy. To me. And or even just do it, even suggesting it's crazy to me. But doing it, that's so, like, the audacity. Yeah. And then the parents. Oh, the parents. Oh, well, yeah. you should let them back in. You should give them. I'm like, why don't you support them? I know what the kind of parents those are. Even, even if you're out of town, why don't you pay for them to yeah. support them? Is this the well, favorite sibling you. situation I that we're like in right it, now? It has to be because there's no other reason why you're like, <laughs> your grandchild died and your, your child is dealing with that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't get anyone siding on the other side who's like okay with that. Yeah. Unless they're just like really like emotionless people who are like, it's been two years, you should be done. Right. I feel like everyone else is more just like, oh, just get over it kind yeah. of deal. Not like that they're siding with them. It's like, just get over yeah. it. And I'm like, no, I'm not going <laughs> to get over it. And because you guys are so against me, I'm going to end doubly. This mm. is going to be forever. Yeah. I'm definitely not letting you back in the house. I, You're not the asshole to me at all. No. I'm not letting you back in because I can't trust you. Even the people that take their side, I might be like, yeah. you're not invited to Thanksgiving and Christmas either. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't even know how long. I don't think I'm going to talk to you for a while. Yeah. Like, that's oh, how hurtful sure. it is. Mm -hmm. For sure. I'm probably not going to speak to you for a very long time. And beige? <laughs> you couldn't even pick a good color? You couldn't even pick the millennial oh, gray. Oh, my gosh. Are you kidding me? You don't know what's in anymore? Okay. <laughs> But yeah, I trust you. You have no taste either. Not only you're a bad person, you have no taste. Yeah, that's <sighs> wild. That's okay, weird. so top comment. Hell no. Even if it was a simple storage room, that they, they had the nerve to redecorate and yeah. make decisions about your home. The details only make it even more entitled. They can go to the parents' house if they're in such a tough spot. Yeah. Somebody else said this. I don't care what room in the house it was. It was not their house to do anything with yes. that. And to do it in a dead child's room, I hope they rot in hell. Oh, my gosh. People are not happy about this. No. Whoa. They did not like this. They weren't. Um, That's yeah. crazy. It was uh, definitely like a really tough story and a stupid situation. All right. Okay. I'm just going to start off just like, oh, yeah, I just got my pool set up and. Yeah, it's great. Oh, um, hi, neighbor. Hey, sorry, I didn't mean to be staring that yeah. hard. Um, is your pool open for the summer? Mommy, I want to <laughs> swim. So can we go Shut swim? the. F <laughs> I want to swim. Eat a Dorito, right? You take these Doritos and go eat them. Uh, um, hey. Yeah. Uh, is your pool open? I don't know if you heard my joke. I will say it again. <laughs> is your pool open for the summer? I, I, I did hear <laughs> your joke. That's a good one, mommy. You're funny. <laughs> If you did you want to if you if you guys want to I can you can use it well if you don't mind see you got me the kids saying out. oh wow you guys are ready uh, okay. Okay. let's go okay <laughs> woo cool well I'll just be out in, in the back mm -hmm. over here uh, okay just thanks hanging out so you know uh, I'll see you guys and okay yeah okay. That was, you got a nice pool here yeah thanks um, <laughs> okay. mommy is this our pool now. Uh, oh, these kids are funny. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, the next it. day, oh, just coming home from work. Just, what's that here in the back? <laughs> 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 Who's it? Is this? Is this that girl from next to? Hey! Hello! Hey! Hey, hey your music's a little loud. OP, can you stop yelling? Thank you. Okay, okay I'm sorry. Uh, hi, can you turn your music down? Hey, yeah, um, sure. I mean, what? I can keep it down for a little bit. What's going but on? You want me to turn it around? The DJ? Turn it up. <laughs> who is this? Oh, who's that? Woka, woka. Hey, who, oh, hey, who made this beat? <laughs> wait, 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 hey, hey. Is that a fudge hey. bar or is that a poop? Timmy, what? is that a fudge bar or is that a poop? In I the pool. It's pretty Wait. sure it's a poop. Who are these other women? <laughs> oh, this is my book club. Oh. Well, so we're doing. What are you uh, doing here? Well, we're just doing like those workouts that you do in the pool. Like, hey, is this your house? Yes. yes. <laughs> I, do a, 
I don't know who, which one, but I blew out a fuse earlier hooking oh, all no. my equipment oh. in. So oh, okay. I just wanted house. to let you know. Okay, I'll have to check that out. Um, you should really rewire this. It's not good for parties. Okay, I, I didn't plan to have parties. Why are you guys here? Can you play the apple? Yeah. I play the apple button right to the core okay. and all the things. Cool. Well, it's a TikTok dance. Okay. I don't have that song. Listen, <laughs> wait. <laughs> Guys, can, can who's going to pay me? <laughs> Not me. Okay. Not, it's the owner of this house. No. Because <laughs> I told my fee earlier you said I would get paid when I got here, so. Yeah, I said they would pay you, but no, I'm not paying for this. Oh, right, yeah. I mean, why are you you said it's your house, right? Get out of my pool! (laughs) I'm the DJ. I came to your party. That was that was not my fudge bar, whatever that is. is, I didn't invite you over over there. Oh, why would I be here? It's your house. I'm the DJ at your party. She invited you over. This isn't my party. This is my house. I didn't plan any of this. Wait, that doesn't make sense. It's your house, but it's not your party? That yes. makes no sense, man. Give me my money. No, I let her... Who's no. giving me my money? Go away. <laughs> me go away. You only <laughs> been here for two hours with this party. Listen. And this chick has the most weirdest songs that she's been wanting to request. They're <laughs> strange. Oh, she moved in yesterday. Actually, I don't know her. Don't want to be on Sound Can you go away anymore? As <laughs> I I'm want my pool back. As I'm in this pool. All right, I don't want to talk to some of my neighbors. Listen, hey neighbors, she's throwing a pool party at my pool. Yeah, we were there earlier. You, you were there? there? Yeah. I didn't Can you play Baby anybody? by Justin Bieber. Yeah. <laughs> baby, 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 oh, baby. Wait, no, oh, my money, no. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, where my money at? <laughs> I'm really serious about getting Okay, paid. wait, okay. <laughs> Can you what play should Usher? I do? Why is she here? Da, da, yeah, yeah, yeah. Da, da, yeah. yeah. No, no, you, no, you cannot get paid by me. No. People on Neo. I'm an African son. About a week ago, I, I wore my ass off. When no one's getting paid, though. though. That's because no one's paying you. No one is paying, paying you. We didn't want you here inside my pool fun. party. Wait, hey, it's not my hey, pool party. Everybody in the pool. Everybody in the pool. Everybody in the Y'all need to go home right now. Hey, 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 get out now. Oh, okay. <laughs> go okay. home. I'm, I'm burning anyways. Okay. I guess I can go. I'll see you okay. tomorrow. Okay, so God. Oh, God. Okay, stop okay, hitting my left. pool. Are you going to give me the money? Because... Go, go. Oh, thank you, bro. <sighs> okay, have a nice day. He just walks away. <laughs> you too. <laughs> And scene. Yeah. <laughs> I got a free pool party. Yeah. And somebody pooped in your pool. Yeah, someone pooped in the pool. <laughs> All right, so we will see you guys next time, and we'll be back with Brandon. We're yeah. going to go get him right We're now. We're going to get him right now. All right. Bye. Bye.